Arab Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Friends, a very provocative message this evening here that I want to share with you. Something that is very much troubling to me. Uh, and it just doesn't seem to go away. And that is the Resolution 2334 that has been passed by the United Nations. And of course, today in a broadcast, a broadcast that I'm on weekly with Hebrew Nation uh, Radio called Flashpoint, while I was speaking about this whole issue about the United Nations and what they are doing and what's going to happen on January the 15th, I was sharing with Bonnie, Bonnie Harvey, who I'm on there with, about this information here. And suddenly, just uh, the power of the Holy Spirit come upon me. And I recognize another parallel in the story of Esther. I've done many teachings on Esther. And Esther as a, a fantastic parallel, biblically speaking. But suddenly I begin to realize that Barack Hussein Obama, the President of the United States, is a clear type of Haman, the very man that turned against the Jewish people, who got authority from the king because he had the king's ring, he had the king's signet, and what he did, instead of helping the Jews, he ended up signing their death warrant. And that's what we find that is going on. And I wanted to share a little bit of this information with you. I think it's a very powerful, very provocative uh, situation. I've shared with you guys before many times. I'm, I'm not against the Palestinian people. And I'm not, against, I'm not for uh, everything that the Israeli government has ever done when it comes to dealing with the Palestinian people, acqui uh, doing acquisitions, taking land, turning it into state property that did not belong to them, that they did not purchase, that they did not do it, go about things the right way. I understand that. But what I want to make clear as well, that the United Nations has not done right by the Jewish people either. The entire world has not done right by the Jewish people in many instances. This is why we've had the pogroms. This is why we've had the Inquisition. This is why we've had the Holocaust with Hitler killing uh, some six million Jews in Europe, nearly wiping them out and still going on massacres of Jews even today. And I know many are saying that this is what the Jews does to the Palestinians. Not not all Jews are like that, and I want to make that clear as well. But what is, what is happening today when we see Resolution 2334 that, again, is going to throw Jews out of the West Bank and divide Jerusalem and take the Jews out of Jerusalem as well, and then people are saying, but wait a minute, this belongs to the Palestinians. It's what they were supposed to have to start with. You have to understand, Haman is in the background working to kill the Jews, and that's what you've really got to watch out for this. But let me first share with you this quickly. All right, because I've already been through this several times, but I want to just say it in case it's the first time someone sees this video as well. In 1920, when the British Empire, they had already conquered in World War II back in 1917, they had toppled the Ottoman Empire. They did use Arab help in the fighting and doing this as well, but they decided to create a Jewish state. And doing that Jewish state, one of the things that they did then was they had, they had decided to make a map called the British Mandate in 1920 to give the Jewish people their own homeland. Even Adolf Hitler was not for the annihilation of the Jews at first. He also wanted to send them to Palestine, as it was called. This is why they say the, the, the Palestinians of today, they say these are the true Palestinians. Well, the, the homeland was, for the Jews was called Palestine, and it was not intended for the Arabic people. And you have to understand as well, the entire region, including the country that is called Jordan today, all of Israel, West Bank, Gaza, there was less than 400,000 Arabs at that time living in this region. It was a very uninhabitable region. There was a lot of swampland, a lot of malaria. So a lot of Arabs did not live in this region of the world. Yes, you had people, a few people living in Jerusalem, but like Mark Twain said, it was a desolate area. Hardly no one lived there. Nobody seemed to care. All right, but what happened though? The British, even with their own mandate, with the League of Nations, which was basically the United Nations, changed their name to the United Nations later, all they've done was turn on the Jews and they've divided the land for gain as Daniel 11:39 has promised. And it was the United Kingdom that has done this over and over and over. So when they give them this huge, big, beautiful piece of land like the state of Texas to be able, or not even the size of the state of Texas, much smaller than that, maybe the size of Alabama, we might say, to live in, that got taken away. It wasn't, but two years goes by 
before finally the British decide to give to uh, Hussein, his son, Abdallah, 71% of the land they'd promised to the Jews. They give it to him to say, thank you for helping us fight in the battle against the Ottoman Turks. All right, well, that didn't go over too well. And 25 years later, of course, the League of Nations had changed names. They became the United Nations. Now they have this British mandate. And what does the British mandate do now? The British mandate, once again, of course, remember now, in 1922, they'd give the land to the east of the Jordan, to the Jordanian uh, Hashemian kingdom, uh, Hashemite kingdom. But then what did they do on the west side? It was That was all going to become the Jewish state. Well, the Jews were happy. They were getting something else. But in between 1922 and 1947, the Arabs began to say, don't allow the Jews in. Well, the British did what they said. They decided not to allow any more Jews in. They started cutting it back, didn't allow it. And during the six years of Second World War, they just decided to annihilate Jews and allowed no Jews to come to the Promised Land so they could allow illegal immigration from Egypt and other regions of the Middle East to bring more Arabs in to try to populate the area to stop Jewish immigration. Somehow, though, by the grace of God, the Jews made it in. 1947, though, they decided to divide the land again. So do you think that Israel really does trust the United Nations or any of these kingdoms, the British Empire? And believe me, Obama is nothing but another little puppet for the British Empire. It's no different. Nothing has changed. Only our history has been falsified for us. So yes, he is part of the British Empire. And he, Haman, has the king's ring, and he has stamped it to, once again, divide up the land, like the British Mandate of uh, 181 of 1947. But even then, the Arabs rejected it. They didn't want that. They wanted the whole thing, when it was all actually supposed to go to the Jewish people in the first place. So these things keep getting changed, back and forth, back and forth. And so here we are now, and what do we have here in the month of December, well, of course, John Kerry says they didn't have anything to do with it. Does anybody really believe that Americans didn't have anything to do with it? When you see that the Egyptians were willing to back off when Donald Trump calls them, but suddenly the Egyptians have a change of heart as well, and they go through there, and the one nation that could have stopped it from happening was the United States, but they didn't veto it this time. Why? Because Haman's in charge. And that's what the Lord revealed to me today, that Hussein Obama, Barack Hussein Obama, is a modern-day Haman. He has that ring on his finger. And this is his one chance. Because the Jews will not bow. Mordecai will not bow before Haman. And so he is determined to annihilate those Jews for their insolence. Because they won't do as he's commanded. But you know what? Let me tell you something. Esther. Esther is a type of the true believers of Yeshua. The, the, the believers of Yeshua that are actually Jews, part of the house of Israel, that live in the United States, that are willing to stand up, that are willing to approach the king, even if it means upon death, that they're willing to go before, not Believe me, Haman is not the king, but are willing to go to Yeshua himself and go before him in the presence of the Almighty and cry out for mercy for her kindred. Remember what Mordecai said? Perhaps for such a time as this, you were born. Maybe this is why the house of Israel that's been dispersed through all the world, but maybe part of that remnant, maybe part of Esther's own descendants are in the United States, part of the bride of Yeshua that have the opportunity to go into the presence of her king and cry out for mercy upon her people. They're about to be massacred. And don't think that Obama doesn't know what he's doing. And the funny thing is, Donald Trump has been elected president of the United States. And even though he's elected president, he can do nothing about what Haman's doing right now. Why? Because he doesn't have the ring on his finger. Haman does. And Haman knows it. And Haman is using that opportunity to do an evil to the children of Israel. Now, another thing that's very interesting in this whole scenario, in the month of Adar, is when Haman concocted his plan. The last month of the Jewish year 
according to the, Moses, the year that Moses, when Moses, God first made the calendar with him. Nisan was the first month of the year, originally, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt. It was on the 13th of Nisan, the 13th of Nisan, that they were going to bring about the slaughter of the Jews. Isn't it kind of ironic that here in the last month of our Gregorian calendar, Haman abstains and allows a decree to go forth against the Jews with Resolution 2334 by the United Nations. And then what is going to happen now? Seventy nations are going to meet on the 13th, or excuse me, the 15th of January, the first month of the year of the Gregorian calendar. To do what? Seventy nations. Do you realize that when Haman did what he did, the province was to be sent out to all, all the lands to kill and to annihilate all the Jews? Seventy nations now are gathered together to do exactly that. They will gather on the 15th of January in the country of Paris, France to kill all the Jews. And the odd thing is, Haman refuses to bow down. He will not bow down, excuse me, not Haman, but Mordecai. Mordecai refuses to bow down to Haman. And that angers Obama more than you could ever imagine. He figures he's the greatest king on the earth and that Haman or that Mordecai should bow to him, but Mordecai will not bow. And because the Jews will not bow down to him, what does Haman do? Haman takes and builds a gallow for Mordecai himself. Isn't it interesting that they've turned against Netanyahu now? And what are they doing now? Inside Netanyahu's own government, Remember I said to you recently, uh, Daniel 11, uh, I think it's verse 24, 25, or 26, somewhere in there, where it says, They that eat at the portion of the meat of your food, of your table, that will be the one that will destroy you. That's a different prophecy altogether. But the thing is, they're making a gallow to try to hang Netanyahu on. When you look at this, that's what Haman's up to. But you know what? God's not going to let it happen. There is going to be an Esther somewhere in America. The, not just America, but the bride around the world. I say America because in the case of America, you re realize there are 70 nations, but Esther was married to the king of the top nation, the king of Babylon. And guess who's got the ring? Haman does. There's got to be an Esther somewhere that will stand for her people. You may not even know you're Jewish, but you love Israel. Yeah, I'm not, not saying that you have to agree with all the political problems of Israel. I know that there's problems. I know there's things that need to be worked out. I know there's fairness that needs to be done to the Palestinian people as well. But believe me, the Palestinian people are being played by the Pope of Rome, who is the prince that shall come that has come up strong with a small people. It has nothing to do with Haman, though. Haman is that little, no-down, low-down, worthless, for not good-for-nothing guy that has one desire. I have wondered, though, as a type, and I realize that really the king is Yeshua, but as a type, though, in this case here, isn't it interesting how Donald Trump, like, just like uh, the King ah Ahasuerus, when King Ahasuerus found out what was really going on, he ended up hanging Haman on the very gallows that he had built for Israel, for Mordecai. But what was interesting is once he realized what was going on, as he sold his own wife, 
There's nothing I can do. I cannot change the decree that has been made. And neither will Donald Trump be able to change the decree that will be made in France on January the 15th. Because even though he is elected the President of the United States, he doesn't have the ring. What might be interesting, Trump may end up arming those of Judea and Samaria. Wouldn't it be interesting if Trump doesn't end up following the same pattern that King Ahasuerus does? And the people of America, the believers of America, asking him to intervene on behalf of the Jews. Now what's interesting though, if it ends up being a war, which I believe it is going to come down to a war. There will be a lot that will die, as also we see in the prophecies that are going to happen. But what's fascinating to me is to see that all these things that are happening here are lining right back up to the way it was 2,000 years ago. And Esther, someone, has got to make a stand for the Jewish people. Because Haman is determined. He's bent on destroying the, Jew, the children of Israel. And you know, the funny thing is, even John, John Kerry is only playing out that part. But the real Haman is in the White House. Maybe there's an Esther out there as a whole that will pray and seek the Lord that might cause biblical prophecy to fulfill in itself. That will be very interesting to see. We're going to be there inside, in, in Paris, France, to cover this, to cover this actual historic event. It's not a good historical event, but we will be there to cover it. The United Nations, where they'll be meeting the 70 nations, because I know it's going to pass. I know it will pass. Be praying for us, and we thank you for your help, and we do need your help to, to, to be able to cover this, but I think it's important that we bring to you as much as we possibly can, as close as we can get to this, and what actually happens, especially to see the reaction of the people on the ground, to see. I have a very, very funny feeling there's going to be protests there, both for and against. But we may just see just how much the world is against the Jews. Because they were back then in Esther's time as they are today. No difference. Only the time has changed. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. You can visit our website, israelreturns.com. Uh, there's been some changes made there as well. I hope it's a blessing for you. Um, and, uh, but anyway, we'll be talking more about that. We're going to be loading up a very special broadcast, hopefully this coming week here, that we had with Dr. Stephen Pigeon and Brad Huckins uh, as well uh, on the Sefer. And we actually included a link for that on our website there. Uh, I think it's a very nice resource uh, as far as to add to your biblical collection there. If you're into research, that's what I always say, if you're into research, uh, I never say 100% on every book and its authenticity, but I do like it because it, they did do a very good work on trying to restore back uh, those books that were actually part of the King James Version Bible back the, seven, uh, what is it, 1711 or some, something like that. I forget the date on it now. My brain's in another area. Uh, but anyway, Shalom. God bless you. Thank you for watching and thank you for your support. I'm Stephen Benoit. Israel News Live. Shalom.